Hi everyone, welcome to the first official training video of the Notlayer 3 SD-WAN channel. I want to thank you for trusting us with your SD-WAN learning journey. My goal for this channel is to provide a clear video blueprint for folks looking to sharpen their skills and add SD-WAN Ninja to their resume. Over the past year I've been pretty blessed with the opportunity to support some very important clients and lead their shift towards SD-WAN. In doing so, I've gained a great deal of experience with all sorts of deployment scenarios. If I had hair on my head, it probably would have been ripped out by now. So I figured, why not make some videos to capture my lessons learned and contribute to this rapidly growing ecosystem of training material. In this video, we're going to cover the Cisco SD-WAN solution overview, some of the key components that make up the SD-WAN solution provided by Cisco, otherwise known as Viptela, why SD-WAN, that question will be answered, and then also I'll get you started on where to look if you want to do a basic lab setup. So let's get started. First, what is SD-WAN? SD-WAN isn't really defined, which is part of the reason why you'll see a lot, and I mean a lot, of companies offering an SD-WAN product. Luckily, this channel is only focusing on Cisco's implementation, so I won't get into the weeds on other products. Here's how Cisco defines SD-WAN and its benefits. They say SD-WAN is a software-defined approach to managing the wide area network, or WAN. The key advantages include reducing costs with transport independence across MPLS, 3G, 4G, LTE, etc. Um, improving business application performance and increasing agility. Optimizing the user experience and efficiency for SaaS or software as a service and public cloud applications and simplifying operations with automation and cloud-based management. Now that we've briefly skimmed the YSD-WAN, let's see how this is accomplished by acquainting ourselves with the solution components. So number one, vManage. I'm sure if you've looked briefly into the SD-WAN solution, you've heard of vManage. This is your single pane of glass management server. With vManage, you gain the power of orchestration, traffic analytics, exposed APIs for full programmability, monitoring, troubleshooting, and more, all in a super intuitive dashboard. We'll get some time behind the wheel of vManage in some upcoming videos. And here's a little snippet here on screen that you can see. Number two, the vBond. This is like the SD-WAN police. I'm just kidding. But seriously, think of vBond as the gatekeeper of your SD-WAN. The vBond orchestrator is a software module that authenticates the vSmart controllers and the vEdge routers in the overlay network and gets everyone talking. We'll talk about uh, those components soon. It needs to be a publicly reachable address so devices in the network can connect to it. It's the only Viptela device that must have a public address. The vBond orchestrator orchestrates the initial control connection between vSmart controllers and vEdge routers. It creates DTLS tunnels to the vSmart controllers and vEdge routers to authenticate each vEdge or C-Edge, which is a Cisco edge, that is requesting control plane connectivity on the SD-WAN. This ensures only the devices you authorize are allowed on your network. The DTLS connections with vSmart controllers are permanent, so the vBond controller can inform the vSmart controllers as vEdges or C-Edge routers join the network. The DTLS connection with vEdge routers are only temporary. Once the vBond orchestrator has matched a vEdge router with a vSmart controller, there is no need for the vBond orchestrator and the vEdge router to communicate with each other continuously. The vBond orchestrator shares only the information that is required for control plane connectivity, and it instructs the proper vEdge routers and vSmart controllers to initiate secure connectivity with each other over DTLS or TLS. Number three, vSmart. The vSmart controller is the brains of the SD-WAN operation. It oversees the control plane of the Viptela overlay network, establishing, adjusting, and maintaining the connections that form the SD-WAN fabric. The main pieces of vSmart controller are the control connections. Each vSmart controller establishes and maintains a control plane connection with each vEdge router like we discussed before. Each connection, which runs as a DTLS tunnel, is established after a device authentication succeeds. And inside of this communication channel between the vSmart and the vEdge router, this traffic is mostly 
the route information necessary for the vSmart controller to determine the network topology and then to calculate the best routes to network destinations and give this route information to the VH routers. The DTLS connection between a vSmart controller and a VH router is a permanent connection. The second characteristic or component uh, that I would say plays a huge role is OMP or Overlay Management Protocol. The OMP protocol is a routing protocol similar to BGP that manages the SD-WAN overlay network. I say it is similar to BGP because of the address family structure. OMP runs inside of the DTLS control plane connection and carries the routes, next hops, keys, and policy information that is needed to establish and maintain the overlay network. OMP runs between the vSmart controller and the VEDGE router and carries only control plane information. The vSmart controller processes the routes and advertises reachability information learned from these routes to other VH routers, B edge routers, in the overlay network. Key reflection and rekeying. The vSmart controller receives data plane keys from a V edge router and reflects them to other relevant V edge routers that need to send data plane traffic that way. Uh, the vSmart also has a policy engine that provides rich inbound and outbound policy constructs to manipulate routing information, access control, and also segmentation. The vSmart controller maintains a centralized route table, or a RIB, routing information base that stores all of the route information called OMP routes that it learns from the VEDGE router and any other vSmart controllers in the SD-WAN network. Based on the configured policy, the vSmart controller shares this route information with the Viptela network devices in the network so that they can communicate with each other. The vSmart controller is just software that runs on a VM or virtual machine on a server configured with ESXi, ESXi or VMware or even Linux KVM. The fourth and final component that we'll discuss is the vEdge or CEdge. So when I say vEdge, I mean a Viptela device or a Viptela software or CEdge is how we're identifying the, the Cisco native products that are running the SD-WAN code. The edge router can be deployed as a hardware or software device. It's your data plane or forwarding component. When you place a edge router into an existing network, it's like any other normal router. V edges and C edges support typical routing and switching functions such as OSPF, BFD, VRRP, one q and QoS to name a few. In newer versions of Viptela code, V edges and C edges also support EIGRP. For the purposes of this channel, we will be sticking with Cisco's recommended 1841 code, which will be used exclusively on all upcoming certifications. The VEDGE router's components are the DTLS control plane connection. This is a pretty important aspect. Uh, each VEDGE router has one permanent DTLS connection to each vSmart controller it talks to. This permanent connection is established after device authentication succeeds, as we mentioned before, and it carries the encrypted payload or control plane traffic between VEDGE and the vSmart controller. OMP also plays a huge role in the VEDGES, as described for the vSmart controller. OMP runs inside the DTLS connection and carries the routes, next hop, keys, and policy information needed to establish and maintain the overlay network. OMP runs between VEDGE router and the vSmart controller and is only for control plane information. Now that we have a grasp on the why and the how from a 30,000 foot view, we're ready to start exploring the process of building an SD-WAN from the ground up. For the purposes of learning as much as possible, this channel will only focus on deployments as if you were to do everything yourself, not pushing the Cisco SD-WAN as a service easy button. In order to build a lab like mine, you'll need access to Cisco downloads via an active service contract connected to your Cisco account or CCO account. Unfortunately, there's no way around this, and I can't share any image files. I can, however, share the name of the exact images you'll need and the emulator I recommend. The images that you'll need are the VEDGE and VBOND. These two share the same image you'll find in the Cisco download section. The VBOND daemon is run on top of the VEDGE software. It is not recommended to also use this node as a data plane router. I've listed the exact image files on the screen. You will also need some routing images to, look, to load into your lab to set up a mock ISP or multiple mock ISP scenarios for your SD-WAN lab. I'll show you some places later you might look in order to find these on the internet. 
We'll need some sort of management desktop image as well to run as a certificate authority for the environment. There are plenty of options out there and the selection is highly dependent on your individual skill set, whether you do Windows or Linux, etc. Don't be worried about the file formats, just think of it as a regular virtual machine image, but for Linux. The reason we're downloading this file format is because the emulator I am using and recommending runs Linux KVM as a hypervisor. The emulator I recommend is called EvenG. It is bar none the best emulator tool in the market. It works flawlessly and can be run on bare metal or as a VM itself. I recommend finding a dedicated server to run a bare metal instance of EvenG. Or, if that's not an option, they have very easy instructions on how to deploy in Google Cloud. For this channel, I highly recommend the Google Cloud deployment, and I'll put the link up on the screen now. In the next video, you will be introduced to NotLayer 3's security expert, Brandon Stimson. Brandon is a good buddy of mine and holds a CCIE in security. The video will cover bootstrapping the controllers, which is a very important, crucial first step. So let's make sure we get it right. I'll let him introduce himself, but just know you are in great hands. I hope that you learned a lot in this video, and I can't wait to keep going further.